this combination of increased personalization and automated delivery, as we've seen, results in distortions in the sorts of information that gets delivered to people. And one of the people who commented on this, interestingly, is this fellow Eli Parser in his book. And in this book, he talks about what he calls filter bubbles. And he says, the new generation of internet filters looks at the things you seem to like, the actual things you've done, or the things people like you like, and tries to extrapolate. They are prediction engines, constantly creating and refining a theory of who you are and what you'll want to do next. Together, these engines create a universe of information for each of us, what I've come to call a filter bubble, which fundamentally alters the way we encounter information and ideas. So, People like Parser are concerned that filter bubbles ultimately cause us to become more and more deeply immersed in our own egocentric or idiocentric interests and news sources. Our worldview simply gets reinforced and we never get exposed to new ideas, to innovations, to alternative perspectives. And I think there is something to this. Now, the idea that our information environments have horizons and that those horizons limit what we actually get available to us in our information environment, that's not really new. What's different about contemporary information ecosystems is the way in which those horizons get created. Because there's always been these horizons. For example, most of the people who were living during the Renaissance really didn't experience what we think of as prototypical Renaissance life. They weren't exposed to great artists or great thinkers. Most of them couldn't read and so on because their information environment had a horizon that was largely determined not just by time by the temporal limits of their own lifetime, but also by space and the limitations of that place on the ability to gather and transfer information during that time. Those horizons have dramatically expanded, both spatial and temporal horizons, as we noticed when we started looking at information superabundance. But what we're finding now is that people are using this combination of personalization and automation to create artificial horizons. That is to limit their information availability in ways that mimic those smaller environments that were the standard for people and for other creatures in the past. The interesting thing about this then is that filter bubbles differ from a normal information environment horizon precisely because they're based on choices. And interestingly, many of those choices are outside of the awareness or control of the individuals for whom the choices are being made. So a great deal of personalization is prediction based on information. It's not being directed explicitly by you. And in fact, the motives for doing this are different as well, at least to some extent because the motives primarily for automization and personalization are to encourage you to spend time on a particular platform, to get you to want to maximize the amount of time you spend on a platform to favor one platform over another. So they're largely profit motives as opposed to just natural defaults about the way information can be transmitted. 